Hello everybody, Conodger here. Welcome back to Automation. This is episode number 71, but we are continuing on with our Vector Automotive Challenge, and today we are going to tackle another new car. Even though we have not fully tested out the Radian and whatnot, we've not done any kind of fan build competition or anything like that, I'm going to hold off for a little bit. I have a plan uh, that's going to involve more of a total car company comparison, and uh, we'll find out more about that as the week goes on, but today I want to continue to kind of flesh out the model lineup of Vector, and that will involve building something completely new. I've been in a lot of debate trying to figure out what it is I wanted to build. The year is still 2003, uh, so that kind of limits our bodies, unfortunately. So if we go to the last 10 years, which is what I'm comfortable with working with, I really, really wanted to build an SUV because in the early 2000s, SUVs were an extremely important part of at least the American car culture. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have one. Or a pickup truck. We don't have one of those either. So for for this era, we're not going to have either of those options. So I thought maybe a hot hatch. Hot hatches are pretty popular in this era, and uh, there's certainly a decent body to choose from there. But that's mm, it's kind of below, pretty far below all the other cars we've built so far. The Vextron and the Radiant are. They're, they're a little bit classier than that, and this may kind of taint our company's image uh, in this early stage where people are just starting to learn about the company. Uh, so this is a car we definitely need to build in the future, but maybe not yet. We want to really build up the Vector name. We want it to be something that people, people read and they know, yeah, those are the guys that build those really awesome cars, not those really cheap cars. Uh, you could build a really awesome hatch, but to do it effectively and to do it to the mass market, it needs to be cheap. Uh, so that leads me to here. We are going to choose, let's see, figure out where it is. It's under sedans. And then if I choose this one, yep, I am going to build a wagon. Not just any wagon, it's going to be a sports wagon, trust me. But. It's a pretty desolate market. It can be a fairly expensive vehicle and still be competitive in its class. Uh, and it's just different, you know? It, it gets people talking about our car company. So that is what I'm going to do. Let me work on this body shell some. Try and make it something that I like. So far, I don't know, guys. It's going to take some work, I think. Alright, before I figure out the fenders, let me do the chassis. It's going to be a monocoque, and a lot of this will be pretty pretty standard for us now. I'm going to go for, let's see, what has a good amount of comfort? Comfort is higher with the double wishbone in the front, so let's do that. Uh, and the multi-link has great comfort, so we're going to do that as well. And we're going to go with our polymer body. That's going to be a staple for Vector. We we really take pride in our polymer bodies. They won't dent as easily, they're lower weight, and and we just want to be like Saturn, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. That seems like much more than necessary, so let's bring that back down. 275, 275. We'll do a little bit more in the back, and I think we'll be happy. All right, fixtures, fixtures, fixtures. Let me see what I can do. Let's see if I can take this thing from plain Jane to Shaggin Wagon.
Alrighty, I think I've fidgeted enough with this thing. You can see our family grill is indeed intact, so uh, you can tell that this is a Vector Automotive product. Overall, I tried not to go too aggressive with it. It is a wagon after all, and we are trying to appeal to not just the sport car enthusiasts out there, but to a little bit of everybody. However, this car will have some pretty uh, astounding performance, so uh, there will be there will be a need for a little bit of this aggressive look to it. The back I'm particularly pleased with. I have finally found a use for these not GTR taillights that works very well. Uh, it almost gives it a little bit of a exotic flare look. I like the little lip spoiler in the back. Overall, it's still it's still a wagon. You can <laughs> there's no there's no getting past that. Uh, but I think once we get the four wheels on there, it's really gonna shine. All right, so here's the first choice I'm gonna make that is of major importance, and that is going to be all-wheel drive. We of course don't have a whole lot of engines to choose from. Just go for the regular baseline for now. Uh, can I just choose you? Thank you. There we go. And now we can continue on, and it fits with relative ease, it would look like. Uh, so let's actually just continue on until we hit the trim. And let's see, it is still 2002. How did that happen? Did I misclick back here? Perhaps I did. All right, I don't know when I managed to do that, but I accidentally made the year 2002, or maybe it was the engine that did it. I'm not sure. Uh, not a big deal. But we are going to go for an automatic transmission with a five speed. And let's see, we will have to adjust this as needed. Our estimated top speed is pretty low as of right now. Uh, we'll figure out where that where that goes in the future. Gonna give it a let's see, let's go for maybe a 45, 55. I've never tuned this before, so we'll have to see more what that does as we get there. Let's go for medium compound, 17s, and not 175s. Let's go for 245, 245. Let's see, those look pretty good, and we'll do a good bit of offset. Maybe even a bit more on the back. Eh, no, that's okay. Looks good. Looks real good. We'll do alloys. And chose that. Medium compound. All good there. Vented. Uh, it's a pretty heavy car, I think. So we'll do two pistons and one pistons. And we'll have some sizable rotors in there. That should be good. Moving right along, I'm going to go for fully clad. We have to really take pride in our aero technology and using it to get the best mileage we can. We have way more cooling than we possibly need, so we'll reduce that. And continue on. It's going to be uh, only five seats. Yep. Well, it'll be a five seater, but with uh, lots of room in the back. And we're going to go for a premium interior. Uh, this is the base model, so we're going to go standard CD, power steering, ABS, and let's do traction control just because, like I said, this could be marketed towards a different audience, and they may not they might not be able to handle the power uh, on tap with it. We will see. I'm also going to spend the money and go for advanced 2000s safety. First time we've ever done that as a company. We'll do progressive springs, monotubes. Uh, we're gonna go for sport, but I'm gonna comfort it up a little bit. So somewhere in the middle of the two. Okay, before I get carried away, let me name this car. It is going to be the Vector k which is basically a synonym for wagon. <laughs> I'm a terrible, terrible namer, but it's okay, it sounds cool. And I've never heard a car called that, so props to me. <laughs> um, so we're going to have a five-year all-wheel drive automatic car. The biggest things to me are getting the drivability very high, sportiness pretty good, and the comfort very high. So those, those are the sticking points. We're pretty good shape already at 58, 33, 41, 25, and 60-ish safety. Uh, our economy is lower than anything we produced, but this is with the new economy figures, so this seems... Uh, pretty reasonable. Total cost is less than I figured, 11.4. 4 
I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, but let's do some tuning here. Let's figure out... Uh, yep, yeah, that's what I figured. Our top speed needs to be adjusted. There we go. Uh, did that not... Okay, yes, it did increase our MPG now up to 24. And it actually increased our sportiness because of that higher top speed. Uh, the Viscous LSD, I think, is working fine. Uh, that would just give us more sportiness with the open, however. Hmm, doesn't affect wheel spin at all. It's not really having any wheel spin issues, and it shouldn't, with traction control and automatic transmission, all that stuff, shouldn't shouldn't really have any, any real uh, wheel spin issues. 0 to 60 is a 6.8, that's pretty respectable. But let's adjust this. Okay, then we start to get into wheel spin. Then we I actually kind of nailed it right off the bat, didn't I? So at, what was it, 45, 55? It's pretty much zeroed out. Uh, the closer we get to 50, 50, then it starts to spin. So it's right about here, 47 seems to be the sweet spot. Cool. Uh, here we're having oversteer. We definitely don't want that. Definitely do not want that. Uh, potentially... Really? Really? Why would that be? Okay, so it would fix it, but I'd have to go way down. I assume it's due to the weight balance. Uh, but let's actually do... Let's do some offset or some stagger. Okay. But now let's go straight to the suspension and figure out what we can do. Uh, maybe spring stiffness. It's having a decent amount of, of uh, bump already. But let's try and let's focus on getting rid of this oversteer. That's, that's a big thing. Some more camber in the front. Maybe less camber in the back. Did not help that. Did not help at all. Uh, spring stiffness in the front. It's helping. It's helping. It's going to start affecting comfort here soon. Which it did. Some sway bar in the front. Take some out of the back. No, I'm still having this real bad snap oversteer. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, like I said, I've never built a car like this before, so... I'm definitely having to learn on the fly here. Getting close to it, but it's not. It's not really coming. Not oh, there. There it goes. So that snapped us down to understeer, but it's actually still t trending as oversteery until it gets to that point. That's a pretty sporty setup, and our drivability is still up at 60. So I'm pretty pleased with that overall. Uh, that's actually a pretty cool handling car, considering you know. Wagons have their have their kind of reputation as not being cool, uh, so that's that's pretty neat that we can have that. I've never actually been able to accomplish that with a car, uh, to have it oversteer before it understeers, that is a that is a nice thing. Let's look at everything else. Let's see. We're not changing that stuff. We're not changing this stuff. Uh, let's see. What would we change? Maybe to the luxurious interior would bring your comfort up to only 43. And pretty much hurts everything else, so let's not do that. Uh, I think I did premium before, yeah, that's fine. Stability control. Eh. Eh. Uh, brakes. Could we make the brakes more comfortable? We could. It hurts the sportiness a bit. But it does raise that comfort up. Makes it a little easier to drive. It doesn't hurt anything else, so let's stick with that. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay, and for tires now, one thing I didn't look at was the wheel diameter. So, uh, giving it bigger tires gives it more comfort. And let's see, it doesn't really hurt anything else. Uh, certainly had an effect on its handling, its sportiness. But I think we have some of that to spare, although it did take it down a lot, didn't it? Uh, only less than a point, so that's not a, that's not too bad. Uh, let's let's stick somewhere in the middle there. Forty point seven is pretty good there. I think I've actually pretty much tuned this thing to my likings. 
Uh, so let's take a closer look at it. This is the the baseline V8. Uh, so it has 241 horsepower. Let's look at the test track. 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds, thanks to that all-wheel drive. And a quarter mile of 15.1. Obviously slower due to the weight, which is at 1,462 kilograms, which is 3,223 pounds. Uh, that's, that's pretty hefty. A top speed of 146 isn't bad. And let's see, anything else in here to look at? The braking looks good. Uh, yeah, this all looks pretty good. And then the detail stats, let's see if anything is particularly hurting here. Um, drivability, the footprint is hurting a little because it's a larger vehicle. Other than that, it all looks pretty good. Sportiness, what's hurting us here? Driver assists. Obviously, having traction control makes it less sporty. And other than that, we look fairly good. Engine sound. Huh, engine sound's a little too quiet, apparently. Uh, so that hurts the sportiness, but it's going to raise our comfort. So let's look through this, because that's what I really want to increase, if possible. It's a pretty small vehicle, so passenger space is hurt a little. It doesn't bottom out at all. Has a nice responsiveness, which helps. Really, everything in here is good. Operate quality could be better, so maybe let's throw some money at that. Uh, so let's actually increase the actual base quality of the of the brakes and see what that changes. Uh, comfort still at 40.8, so that doesn't do too terribly much at all. Um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Suspension quality, uh, I guess it's yeah, it's it's it. It's zero level, so it's. I don't think I need any more, really, though. Uh, anything else would would be extreme. So I am really pleased with how this has turned out. With a 63.8, 31.8, 40, uh, 26, and a 59.6, definitely the best safety and the best comfort we have to offer, and probably the most drivability. All right, so there we have it. Something that I bet you you guys didn't think I was going to build a wagon for the Vector Automotive Challenge. And this car will be part of the full lineup. I will do some trims for this guy off camera because we have something special to do for either late this week or early next week that will involve the entire car company. And there may be even an additional car that I build off camera thrown into the mix. We will see. But stay tuned for that. Thanks as always for watching. And I will see you next time.